Hello and welcome to WJTS Inform. I'm your host, Bill Potter, and we are very honored to have in the studio with us the Lieutenant Governor for the state of Indiana, Sue Elsperman. Thank you very much for coming in. Well, thanks for having me, Bill. Well, we are glad to have you here, and, and there is some excitement that you have started a new agency uh, yes. in the governor's office. Yes, uh, we just announced by executive order on Thursday, the governor signed in to uh, executive order the Office of Small Business and Entrepreneurship. And as some might imagine with my past uh, around entrepreneurship, owning mm -hmm. a business and, and understanding the importance of small business growth, that agency has now been stood up and will report to the Lieutenant Governor. It is pulling the ISBDC, the Small Business Development Center, out of the IEDC where it currently resides, uh, along with pulling government uh, procurement and contracting, federal government contracting services that were outside the state uh, and kind of struggled to support, be supported across the state. So we're pulling those programs in and we're adding an ombudsman to small business, which will help small businesses work through state level licensing and permitting processes, which of course are one of the challenges when you're small and trying to get started up. So this should then help to create new businesses or yes. to create, and then I guess thus to create new jobs. A exactly. We want to make it easier. Uh, we want to provide stronger support to small businesses. In Indiana, 99% of businesses employ 500 or fewer. Uh, and we know that most jobs, new job creation is coming from small businesses. So we want to do all we can to provide the support and resources around small businesses and help them grow. Is there a way that, is there like little local offices around for this? Or, It'll or be, I guess will be. There is, the ISBDC will be the core. Mm -hmm. There Which are, already exists. It exists. Okay. There are 52 of those folks across the state of Indiana located regionally and what we will be doing now is providing more resources to them and for them in, in support of small businesses. So I think that structure will be the, the backbone and we'll be adding on to that structure. So in, in essence it's really just taking something that already exists and putting it into a better organizational. Yes and, and giving it more attention. Um, we have, in Indiana, we have probably the, one of the strongest small business directors in the country. Jacob Spock is a graduate of Ball State's, uh, very well renowned, uh, nationally renowned entrepreneurship program. Uh, he is completely young, 30-some year old, you know, who, who really understands what it is to start a business and what it takes to help direct that growth. And you know, from my standpoint, two years ago, I passed the Young Entrepreneur mm -hmm. Program Bill. That was my legislation. We were very aligned in, in my family of businesses that we need to do all we can to help communities, help small business, help farms be successful. And I think this that is the other piece of bringing this new agency under my family of businesses is that we can synergize those activities even beyond OSB through Office of Community and Rural Affairs, through ISDA, Department of Ag, which has its own economic development arm, through tourism, which we know a lot of small businesses are tourism related or potentially impacted by that. So we see lots of synergy with the agencies that I already have reporting. How are some of the other agencies doing that you oversee? Well, we had very exciting announcements two weeks ago for the stellar communities. People may not be familiar what that means, but the stellar communities is, again, another nationally recognized program started on the, under the previous administration where it brings the resources of INDOT funding, OCRA, which it, through the federal uh, CDBG uh, grants, federal grants coming through, um, as well as uh, our Housing and Community Development Authority, which reports to me and has HUD-related funds. So we pull all those together for one community to make transformational change. So the, the two communities this year that were awarded the stellar uh, designation, if you will, are Bedford uh, and Richmond, Indiana. Uh, there are four previous ones. Those communities will have somewhere in the, the area of 10 to 20 million dollars of resources brought in, matched with private dollars and, and their own investment dollars. But they can make, as you can imagine, in a small town, in a smaller community, that kind of uh, uh, pooling of resources can make a big difference. Those communities are held to a very high standard. They have to have great, uh, great planning that goes on, comprehensive planning, but also great community involvement 
to know where they want to go and what they want to do. If somebody would like to take advantage of, of these new organizations and the other organizations, yeah. what's the easiest way? Is it how do they contact them? Well, I would say if they're if we have local communities interested in the stellar process, uh, I would encourage them to reach out to one of our old friends here who works for me, John Craig, who is the deputy director in Okra. He's a previous mayor of Petersburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the Stellar program, Petersburg has applied. We have many communities that apply. Only two will win each year. So it is a very competitive process, but he's very knowledgeable. And he also uh, brings the small community perspective to our state house and that agency. Now you are in what I would have thought would have been the middle of your 92 uh, county tour, but really there's so many counties. Yes. Uh, how's that going? We have completed 23 of 92, so that's exactly one quarter of the way uh, in uh, just a, a month and a half, you know, so that's kind of, we can, we're out about three days a week uh, because I do have a day job at the State House as well <laughs> to cover off on. Right. Um, we project being done in November, but the tour's going fabulously. As we expected, no two counties are alike. We meet with the elected officials in one meeting uh, to talk about what's working in their communities and county uh, and what their struggles are and how the state can help. And then we meet with business and agriculture in the afternoon uh, and have that same kind of conversation heart to heart with them. Extremely helpful. You know, you see that uh, though there are some common overarching challenges, there are also many unique challenges and opportunities in the communities and that's what we're looking for is how can how can the governor and I best support growth in Indiana both helping our our communities and counties as well as our business and agriculture what are you finding that that people are most concerned about as you go through your tour not surprisingly mandates mm -hmm. um, you know most of those are federal but not always you know some you know as a state we have our our share but the health care mandates are are of really front and center both at the county level because it will require employer as an employer the counties to do things but for business and ag very much it is you know making them uh, concerned about can they grow should they grow so holding back job growth which is a great concern mm -hmm. to me but those those are the kinds of things that they're most concerned so, you know certainly environmental regulations EPA etc those are our concerns as well we're interested in hearing how can we help you know, there are things that, as a state, we're looking to try to find ways to streamline uh, procedures and red tape and make sure that certainly we all agree we want to protect the environment and safety and those things are important to everyone. But how we do that and how we can help uh, businesses be successful, continue to grow, help communities move forward with their, their visions is very important. Now, I know Indiana is doing well and will continue to do well. Uh, what do you see, though, are some of the challenges that maybe Indiana needs to be concerned about in the next six months? Well, we know, and I see this as both a, a challenge and a great opportunity, we know that in order to really grow jobs, our, as we're now a very business-friendly state on so many areas, workforce is our biggest challenge. As I talk to the employers, they will say they struggle to find qualified workers. And it's really two pieces. One is having the right skills because as we've grown back our manufacturing workforce, those manufacturing jobs are higher tech than they were before. They require you know, machine operators and technicians and CNC operators, et cetera, as opposed to the lower skill of the past. And we don't have enough of those. And they also worry that they, they struggle to find employees who will come to work, you know, able to pass the drug screens, uh, will come every day to work. And you would think with 8% unemployment that wouldn't be an issue, but it is. So I think mm -hmm. our challenge over these next months, we are launching the Indiana Career Council, which will look at how we do workforce across the state, and the Indiana Regional Works Councils, where we'll look at how do we connect into career and technical education for that skilled workforce. It's a lot of work to be done both from education, from the employer side, from the partnering side of making it all come together and fulfill the needs and the opportunities that are there. And we need to make sure that we are creating jobs uh, because even though the state may have to spend some money to create mm -hmm. some jobs, that money comes back in tax money. Well, absolutely, but most importantly, it it is that's the uh, way families survive. You know, we want every Hoosier that can work to have that opportunity 
to have a good job. And so I think the state's committed to work with employers and to work with both K-12 and higher education to try to right size this and, and fit better, match better the skills of our employee workforce to the jobs that we have. Well, as you're, you're now halfway through your term, is there anything that you'd like to, to say to wrap up the show? Well, just happy to have the first six months under our belt. <laughs> uh, it's not halfway through the term. It's actually uh, one-eighth of a oh, four-year okay. term. All so right. we're, but well, having, right. look at that. having one, having a budget session under our belt, now we're just moving into the new budget mm -hmm. as of July 1. So uh, it's now really ours. It's our budget because we were living under the uh, old Daniels administration budget before. So... Now it's, it's really looking forward to say how do we implement uh, the good ideas, the good legislation that came out of this General Assembly session and continue to move Indiana forward. Okay, well, Lieutenant Governor, we always appreciate when you come in. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Our guest has been Lieutenant Governor Sue Elsperman, who lives in Ferdinand, Indiana. Thank you for watching WJTS Inform. We are local people watching local people.